Wokeness ruins damn near everything it touches, and unfortunately, movies and TV shows are no exception. These days in Hollywood, wokeness is everywhere, from Star Wars to Lord of the Rings to whatever this is, and I don't even know what the f*** this even is. One of the most common woke tropes to be shoehorned into just about every single major film franchise is the strong woman protagonist, who is surrounded by cartoonishly evil and or impossibly incompetent men. And it's this exact trope that got me thinking about something that everyone who's ever had to sit through a gender studies course, like I did in college, remembers from that course. The Bechdel Test. The Bechdel Test is a test created by feminist cartoonist Alison Bechdel, which has three criteria which a film has to meet in order for feminists to not feel guilty watching it because it doesn't reflect their weird girl boss power fantasies. Sorry, what I meant to say was that the Bechdel test three criteria are meant to measure representation of women in films as a sort of litmus test for feminist filmgoers. Those three criteria that a film has to meet to pass the test are, one, the movie has to have at least two women in it, two, the women have to talk to each other, and three, they have to talk to each other about something other than a man. This test is, of course, completely ridiculous, as it doesn't even work as a measure of female representation in film, let alone as a measurement of a film's, you know, quality. But this test did get me thinking, what if there was a test to measure the quality of male representation in film and TV? A sort of reverse Bechdel test. I'd say that with all of the movies and TV shows these days that have been using male characters solely as a means to demonstrate how a woman character is superior to them, it's about time that somebody proposed such a test. So I give you the reverse Bechdel test. The criteria are as follows. 1. The movie has to have at least one named male character in it. 2. That character has to be competent, moral, and masculine. And 3. No male character in the movie can be gratuitously belittled or dominated by a woman. Those first two criteria are pretty straightforward. If all of the male characters in your movie are bumbling idiots or Saturday morning cartoon villains, it doesn't really qualify as a good representation of men. Also note the need for a male character to not only be competent and moral, but also masculine. If the only good, competent men in your content are inherently feminine, then your eye-roll-worthy messaging about toxic masculinity is pretty obvious. The third criteria is a little bit more complicated because, of course, there is the question of what is or isn't gratuitous when a male character is dominated or belittled by a female character. This is somewhat subjective, but I'll give you some examples of what should pass and what should fail the reverse Bechdel test. Many movies have female villains who are supposed to belittle and, at least until they are defeated at the film's climax, dominate the hero. Annie Wilkes from Misery is a good example of a female villain who dominates a male hero, but it's not gratuitous because her actions are meant to be horrifying, not empowering. And of course, some movies have female heroes who tease or insult the male characters around them, but it makes sense within the context of the story they're in. Think Vasquez from Aliens or Elizabeth Swan from Pirates of the Caribbean. The only thing that should really make a film fail this criteria is when a woman belittles or dominates a man in a movie or TV show seemingly out of nowhere or in a way that doesn't make sense or fit into the film's narrative. Think this infamously cringeworthy Jennifer Lawrence line from Dark Phoenix. And by the way, the women are always saving the men around here. You might want to think about changing the name to ex-women. I'll also note that obviously not every movie that fails this test poorly represents men. Films with no male characters at all, or very few characters to begin with, such as Portrait of a Lady on Fire or The Descent, aren't misandrist or anything. They just aren't about men. And that's okay. Not all movies have to be about men. But when you do put men in your movie, it shouldn't solely be to demonstrate how they are inferior to a woman in your movie. Overall, I think this criteria presents a good litmus test that will weed out 99% of movies which come with a heavy dose of misandry or are concerned with politics more so than entertainment. The reverse Bechdel test that I've created, while not quite as simple as the original Bechdel test, is pretty close in its design and the criteria really isn't much to ask, or so you'd think. Many modern movies, including most big blockbuster franchises, fail this test. Case in point, Star Wars The Last Jedi. 
So The Last Jedi, interestingly, it actually barely passes the first two criteria if you go by a very generous standard since both Yoda and Chewbacca are very briefly featured in roles where they are, in fact, competent, moral, and I suppose also masculine if you find little green alien men masculine. Every other male character in the movie is portrayed as either incompetent or evil. And of course, once you get to Criteria 3, The Last Jedi falls flat on its face, with numerous scenes of both Poe Dameron and Luke Skywalker being dominated and or belittled by Rey and Admiral Holdo in ways that just don't make any sense within the context of the film and which reek of wokeness. And so we now have the reverse Bechdel test, something you can all use to decide what movies and TV shows are worth your time if you don't want to watch woke feminist propaganda and actually want to be entertained. Given the stuff that Hollywood has been churning out lately, I'd say it's sorely needed.